The potential sale has been set aside, but the controversy over JEA has not gone away. And that includes the possibility of a big golden parachute for the recently fired chief executive. I don't think there should be any severance pay. That's just one of the elements we're looking at as City Councilman Rory Diamond joins us. Plus, he's been called one of the most beloved and respected men in the history of Jacksonville. We're speaking to some of those closest to Bob Shercliffe about his impact on the region and the tens of millions of dollars he raised for good causes. All ahead on This Week in Jacksonville. Well, thank you for joining us today. It seems January will be a pivotal month in the future of Jacksonville's power and water utility. Months of controversy concerning a potential sale Maybe coming to a head here. During the first two weeks of December, a scandal broke about a potentially lucrative employee incentive plan. Lawyers hired for JEA were about JEA, soared past the expected fees into the tens of millions or 10 million and more. A civic council called for a halt to the sales process, and then the mayor called for it to go to the city council by the end of last month. And then a day after questioning by two city council members, the JEA board fired their CEO, Aaron Zahn. That's a small uh, encapsulation of what's been going on here. And joining us right now, City Councilman Rory Diamond and Rick Mullaney uh, from the Jacksonville University Public Policy Institute, our political analyst here as well. And Mr. Diamond, I asked you here because of uh, you were forefront at a kind of a, a fact-finding hearing, if you will, right. that included interviewing or asking for testimony from the CEO, Aaron Zahn. He was fired a day later, and what's coming up soonest is this Tuesday, JEA says... The board is meeting again. They're going to try and figure out what happens with him because he was fired. And is it with cause, without cause? Maybe explain where you stand on that because that's a big issue for a lot of people. Well, this one should be really easy for everybody. They need to fire uh, Zahn with cause. Now, cause means that you have a good reason. And there's a reason he was fired. It's an absolute mess at JEA right now. This whole process costs us $10 million. If you listen to our four-hour hearing, he had to explain how he was going to get hundreds of millions of dollars of our tax dollars into his own pocket if JEA was sold. This is not complicated. This issue hasn't gone away. This is still something that council members like Mr. Diamond are going to have to deal with, right? It, it certainly has, and I have a question for you. You've gotten very high marks in that hearing for both your preparation and your questioning. Appreciate it. And as it relates to cause, what were two or three of your biggest takeaways? And I understand this, the standard is either gross negligence or willful misconduct. Right. And do you believe that what came out then and Based on your investigation, does it meet that standard? Yeah, if you look at the four hours of testimony going on and on, there are multiple moments where it's clear there is gross incompetence. There is an attempt to make hundreds of millions of dollars off of the people of Jacksonville. The one big takeaway is that they said they killed this performance plan because we might sell JEA. But if you listen to all their answers for four hours, they're talking about documents that have in them, baked in them over and over again, we might sell JEA. So it doesn't make any sense why they killed it. Clearly, they wanted to make a lot of money. That's a reason to fire not just Aaron Zahn, but many of the executives over at JEA. So many of the executives either stepped down or been asked to depart. Is that enough? And what I've been hearing these last couple of weeks is, hey, it's not enough that the sale is off the table. We need to get to the bottom of what was going on in these last many months, right? Yeah, I mean, that, and what happened was it's a breach of trust. Nobody trusts anything that's going on over there right now. I don't trust what's happening over there. I don't think the people of Jackson will do. So what you have to do is ask every question, look at every email, talk to every witness, uncover every stone, and only when you put all that out in the sunshine can we kind of figure out what happened and rebuild trust with JEA. But it's going to be a process, and we have to go through that. So yeah. let me ask you, Councilman, you, you talked about that we had that one hearing, but I, what I hear you saying, of course, is that you want a further investigation, a take at a special city council committee with subpoena power? Absolutely. What would you like to see that committee look at, and what is its purpose? Yeah, so, I mean, never before in the city of Jacksonville's history have we ever had an investigatory committee of the city council with subpoena power, but today is the day. We need to do that. We need to look at the performance unit plan, the bonus plan again. We need to figure out how did we get to this place of mistrust with conflicts of interest, with all sorts of curious, weird things going on. I hear conspiracy theories every single day, and we need to dispel those. Either they're true, and we need to make sure people are criminally prosecuted or people are fired, or they're not true, and we need to restore the, the public's trust in our public utility. But the only way you do that is to go through each of these pieces carefully, the way we did the last hearing, Let's put it all out there. Let the cards fall where they may. When you talk about conspiracy theories, I've heard people over the months say, well, uh, the sale of JEA 
was fait accompli. It was already going to happen. And this just, they were waiting until after last year's, last spring's elections, and then they were going to start the process. Do you believe any of that, or is it still to be determined well, if that was the case? Let's look at, let's see where the evidence leads us. I'm a former federal prosecutor. I was always driven by evidence. That's what makes sense. I want all the emails. I want all the phone logs. I want all the documents. And let's see what they say. Ask them questions under oath about those emails and those phone logs and the documents. We'll see what we find. So, so the investigation you're envisioning, of course, the pup, but also procurement. How was Morgan Stanley procured? Absolutely. How were some of the law firms procured? Where did the $10 million go? Where's our $10 million? So yeah. that's all within the scope of what you want to look at. Absolutely. And the other thing we can do is start to get some of that $10 million back. Because I think we were given bad advice. I think that some of these contracts didn't make any sense and people breached their duty to us and we should get that money back. So there's lots of things we can do to start to restore all the bad that has come out of this process. So speaking of money back, kind of back to the first part of this, the CEO has been let go in his contract. If he's let go, he gets a certain amount in severance. What we've looked at and as we've looked at that contract, if fired uh, or terminated without cause, uh, then basically he gets to keep a whole bunch of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Is that the real driving force between, behind saying, no, we should fire him with cost so we can save money, or is it a matter of trying to hold someone accountable for not getting the job done? Well, I think there's two things. One is the principle of it. Every penny more that we pay Aaron's on to me is wrong, right? If you can't tell, I'm mad. This whole thing has made me very mad. But the second piece is we don't owe him any money. So if he's fired with cause legally, that's our money. Why would we give it to anyone else? I can give you a thousand other things we could do in Jacksonville with $800,000 and putting it in somebody else's pocket isn't one of them. Yeah. What is the expect? Do you have an expectation for what the board will do at the specially called meeting on Tuesday? Uh, my understanding was when they left it the last time, you could either be for cause, without cause, or reach a settlement of right. some kind. Do you have a sense of where this is heading? We certainly know where you'd like for it to head. Right. But I mean, I, I, I'm always hesitant to speculate. My guess is that there'll be a settlement. If I had to guess, but I don't know, and it's not what I support, I think he should be fired with cause. Yeah. Let's wrap it up here, but Councilman, one of the things that we've heard from Civic Council, from council members is, hey, there's a lot of things we could be focusing on in Jacksonville if we weren't all focused on what's going on with JEA. Do you agree with that? Are you looking forward to getting past this? Or do we have to go through this process for however many months it takes? Well, we got to get through it, but you know, there's a whole city to run. Um, I talked to the mayor the other day and he said, I have other priorities. And I said, yeah, I, we all do. Let's, let's get to those, but we got to go through this process first. I've been here talking about veteran suicide in the last couple of months. I'd like to get to, back to talking about that. Absolutely, we need to talk about other things, but first we have to restore trust in our local government and we need to go through this in order to get there. Yeah, uh, somebody wrote this week, hey, 2019 saw politics in Jacksonville break. Can we restore that in 2020? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, at the end of the day, we're dealing with human beings. Many of them made a lot of mistakes, but the way you fix mistakes is to learn from them and to make sure they don't happen again. So the other thing you'll see from me is a whole bunch of new legislation, making sure people can't do this stuff to us again. So we'll never have to have this conversation in the future. Yeah, well, I think there are a lot of people who would say, thank you, and we want that, and we're looking forward to getting past that. Councilman, we appreciate having you with Thanks us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. So stay with us, and when we come back, Rick is staying with us. Richard Sisiski is joining us, and we're remembering Bob Shirtworth, an icon of service and philanthropy in Jacksonville who passed away this week. So stay with us. We'll talk about the legacy he left behind. That's next on This Week in Jacksonville. My father, Bill Harrell, was an exceptional man. He was born down the road in Live Oak, Grew up around the world, but loved his summers on the farm. Served in the army, went to West Point, became a deputy sheriff and spent 40 years fighting for others. He taught me that there are no shortcuts. His legacy is that our clients deserve nothing less than hard work and dedication. I am proud to continue that philosophy in our work at Harrell & Harrell. Don't settle for less than you deserve. Obamacare is a complete and total disaster. Let Obamacare implode. These wild attacks on health care hurt the patients I care for. I've been a nurse in New York for 30 years. I know the difference leadership can make because I saw what Mike Bloomberg did as mayor. Mayor Bloomberg helped lower the number of uninsured by 40%, covering 700,000 more New Yorkers. Life expectancy increased. He helped expand health coverage to 200,000 more kids and upgraded pediatric care. Infant mortality rates dropped to record lows. 
And as mayor, Mike Bloomberg always championed reproductive health for women. So when you hear Mike Bloomberg on health care. This is America. We can certainly afford to make sure that everybody that needs to see a doctor can see a doctor. Everybody that needs medicines to stay healthy can get those medicines. You should know. He did it as mayor. He'll get it done as president. I'm Mike Bloomberg, and I approve this message. I just said, help me. A local military dad's sacrifice left him lifeless for nearly 12 minutes. I had no heartbeat, and I wasn't breathing. Then, after three days in a coma. How is it that you're here today telling us this story? Please don't take my husband from me. This is not real. This doesn't happen in real life. The mysterious twists of fate that led to his survival. A story of faith. You have to see to believe. Miracle Man, Monday starting at 11 on News 4 Jax. You might have heard about this show before. Now we'll break it down using science. Sheldon Leonard, Raj, and Howard, that's the Friendship Alliance. Sheldon knocks to the power of three for some reason. Multiply that by 12 for 12 awesome seasons. It all comes out to one incredible series. The Big Bang's the best one of all the theories. Big Bang. Weeknights at 9 and 9.30 on Channel 4, the local station. This station will be transitioning to operation on a new over-the-air channel at 10 a.m. on January 16th. To continue receiving our over-the-air signal with an antenna, you'll need to rescan your television set. This station will continue to be available to cable and satellite subscribers. Please contact your cable or satellite company for details. More information about the transition can be obtained from the FCC at FCC.gov or by calling 1-888-CALL-FCC. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. Rick Mullaney is with us. Richard Sisiski is with us. And we're going to spend a few minutes talking about someone that we all deeply respected and, and someone that so many people in our area dearly love. Bob Shercliffe passed away this week. The 91-year-old was an absolute giant in Jacksonville and all of Northeast Florida, known for his incredible giving and his leadership. So, Richard, you were business partners with Mr. Shercliffe. Why don't you start us out here? How long was that? And what's the impact he made on you personally? Oh, well, Bob and I were partners since 1988. And it was a remarkable partnership because I learned so much from him about my business and about our business. But what I really learned is how to live a life fulfilled. And Bob was a great inspiration to me in my business and in my personal life. And it's a, it's a very big hole, yeah. you know, in our lives now. Has this been uh, a difficult week? I know Thursday is when he passed away. Is it still it, right it, here? It's still reasonably raw, yes. But I got to visit with him uh, just before he died. And that was a blessing for my wife and I to, to be able to hold his hand and kiss him on the forehead one last time. So, yes, that was a... Yeah. A special thing. And he was alert enough. He, he knew we were there, and that made us feel really good. Yeah. Rick, you and I had talked about uh, your relationship with Bob Shercliffe. Uh, you called him, as Richard did uh, a few moments ago off camera, a mentor in your life, right? Oh, yeah. yeah he was a friend and mentor. And I, I'd like to say after my dad, really the most significant person in my life as far as shaping my thinking. He was a role model. And I'll say this too, Ken. Our first segment, we talked about JEA. I, I think locally... Uh, we're all looking for role models and trust. I think nationally we're looking for role models and trust. Uh, I don't think you have to look any further than Bob Shercliffe. If you take a look at what he did in his business life, what he did as a community leader, what he did philanthropically, who he was personally, he's not only an inspiration to Richard, he's an inspiration yeah. to all of us, and I mean that sincerely. Yeah, one of the things that, that came out as we were discussing uh, Mr. Shercliffe and that he had passed away and what we would remember, what the impact is that he leaves on our community, um, was uh, even the sign that's outside St. Vincent's, right? It's one Shercliffe way. Richard, why don't you start here? I want to hear from each of you. What does that mean to be uh, doing things the Shercliffe way? The Shercliffe way, as Rick has pointed out on multiple occasions, is the right way. There, Bob only knows one way to do it. It's very linear. It's the right way. There's no deviations from doing things correctly. Bob used to tell me, and I've told my kids and grandkids, there is no right way to do the wrong thing. And, and it's so true, and there's so many lessons packed into that one yeah. small statement, but it's at the core of what Bob was, of, of living a just life, a righteous life, yeah. full of purpose. That was a Shercliffe-ism, right? That was something That was a Shercliffe-ism, yeah. I don't know if he made it up. He used it a lot. <laughs> I'd love to talk about the Shercliffe way for a second. It was the result of the work of many people, Jane Lanier, Leland Burpee, a number of people. 
But the street in front of St. Vincent's Hospital used to be Bar Street. Yeah. A group came together to rename it. And when the group got together, there was a discussion of Shercliff Street Road. And before long, when Shercliff Way came on, everybody said Shercliff Way, because that is the way. And the address for St. Vincent's Hospital is one Shercliff Way, because there is sort of one Shercliff Way, which is the right way. Yeah. St. Vincent's was one of many, many institutions, hospitals, educations, the arts that benefited from the generosity and support of Bob Shercliff. Well, one of the beautiful things about this visit is I knew him this much. Yeah, right. You guys knew him this much. And yet he was able to have an impact on people he had just met like me three and a half years ago. Um, how did he do that? What was it about Bob Shercliff that could affect you deeply the first time he met you? It was this gift, this, this graceful way. You know, it, I've said he talked to princes, popes, potentates. It didn't matter uh, who he was talking to. The person just working a shift at St. Vincent's. If he was talking to you, you were the only person he was focused on. And he had this great way of being interested in what you have to say. It's a, it's a great trait. I wish I could emulate. I try to emulate a lot of Bob, what Bob does and what he did. You know. And uh, that's, that's just one thing you have to work on hard because you felt it at the first time. And everybody I've been around who've met him just briefly say exactly the same thing. Yeah. What a great tribute. Is that something that we can do? Can, can I take that trait that I saw in Bob Shercliffe and, and put it inside and then share that with other people? Well, Richard and I were talking about this earlier today, and uh, we'll put it simply, we're striving towards it. Yeah, right. uh, we don't think we're nearly there. That quality of looking at you and making you feel like you're the only person in the room and the most important in the room is, was a remarkable quality. But Bob was optimistic. Uh, Bob had a tremendous sense of humor. He was, of course, generous. It was a package that everybody embraced, as I've mentioned before, one of the most beloved people in the history of our city and one of the most respected, a rare combination of, of qualities. But those personal qualities is what endeared you but it was the professional in the workplace, civically and philanthropically, where he helped transform our city. Truly remarkable man, and I think one of the greatest in the yeah. history of our city. Uh, does it surprise people who really knew him that some have estimated that his fundraising for good causes over these decades that he was here in Jacksonville topped $200 million? I'm surprised it's so low. Uh, when I moved here and, and I was a you know, young man and we would go somewhere and and, and I said, Bob, how many, because he's always on the phone raising money for some. I said, Bob, how many groups are you raising money for now? And he went, and he started counting. I said, no wonder we're walking down the street and people cross the street when they see you coming. I thought it was me. It's really him. He just had that way of asking. He always did first and then asked you to help him and help this cause. And it was, it was just this great combination of, of leadership, empathy, and this is important and this is why it should be important to you. It was a great combination, but it was expensive being his friend. Really? Because he'd say, <laughs> I gave and so you should too, that kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, well, we, we, uh, we had a lot of common causes and we had some, you know, there weren't common causes, but we, we, did, uh, we did fry some fish together, yes. Yeah. In the last minute or so, what was the element of faith in his life? I heard him talk about this, his faith really drove what he accomplished in our community, right? Well, let me be really clear on yeah. this. Uh, Bob's Catholicism was foundational. It was central to who he was. And we often hear nationally and otherwise about maybe Catholics who are coming up short. I want to point out one who lived the faith. Yeah. That was Bob Shercliffe. He's a living example of his Catholicism. Uh, and he was faithful. In fact, the Sunday before he passed away, I talked to Father Luke, and he had gone to Mass that day, even in his yeah. late yeah. stages. And I said to Father, I said, you're, ha you're kidding. He says, I'm going to church. It was a big part a defining part of who he was. And I think everything came from that Catholic faith and from that spiritual life that Bob Shercliffe had. Would you yeah, agree? The, the best sermon you can, you can do is the life you lead. And Bob was the embodiment of just that thought. Yeah. Well, Bob Shercliffe, uh, somebody who made a, in, a difference uh, in, in our area, in our, our city or our region, he made a difference in the world. And I know that uh, you gentlemen are gonna miss him. Uh, I know our area will miss him, but uh, remember him through the impact that he made. So thank you for taking some time to thank talk you. about Bob Shercliffe. Always a pleasure, thank you. So we are wrapping up the holidays. We're getting you fully prepared for the rigors of 2020. Speaker and author Sam Murphy joins us next on This Week in Jacksonville. Stay with us.
Get new floors with Empire Today's $99 sale. Buy one room, get carpet, hardwood, or laminate in all other rooms for only $99. So buy one room and get carpet, plus laminate, and even hardwood in as many other rooms as you want. All for $99. That's new floors for the whole house. Buy one room, get floors in all other rooms for only $99. Don't miss Empire's $99 sale. 800-588-2300. Empire. Today. The amazing thing about Morgan & Morgan is that not only are we the largest personal injury law firm in America, we're also very much a local law firm. And our office right here in your town, you will find dedicated, hardworking neighbors of yours who are committed to fighting for you, for the people. And as members of your community, we share your values and are available whenever you need us. We're from your city, we're in your city, we are for the people. Morgan & Morgan. Serving with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office for over 24 years and living in this community all my life, I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. I've been the victim of a crime. I know how victims feel. My number one goal as News for Jacks Crime and Safety Expert is keep you informed, keep you aware, and most of all, keep you safe. I want to be able to provide that kind of perspective so that people will know everything is under control. Watch News for Jacks every night starting at 5, the local station. The Wolfson Children's Challenge raises funds for life-saving equipment and technology at our region's only children's hospital. This family-oriented event features a 55K Ultra Marathon, 55K Team Relay, 30K Individual Run, and a one-mile fun run for the kids. Sign up at WolfsonChildrensChallenge.com and join the fun on January 25th at the baseball grounds of Jacksonville. Positively Jacks, brought to you by Channel 4, the local station. You know what has pinpoint accuracy? The jets that take off from NAS jacks and land here on a narrow flight deck in the middle of the ocean. You know what else has pinpoint accuracy? The weather authority forecasts on News 4 jacks. They show you exactly what time a shower will pop up in your neighborhood. So you know when the weather will impact your day. The weather authority on News 4 jacks. Always watching, always tracking. If you just won't cross the ditch. It's a Duval thing. Named one of the best places to live. That's a Duval thing. And who's more Duval than the morning show team on Channel 4? Nobody. Having News 4 Jacks in your neighborhood day after day to cover important stories you care about. The Weather Authority keeping moms in the know with an hour-by-hour -hour forecast. And having Sky 4 in the air to cover breaking news. Well, that's a Duval thing, too. Duval! The morning show on Channel 4. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville on Channel 4. You know, the holidays are awesome for many and awful for some. A little different segment now as we wrap up our first show of the new year. Sam Murphy is joining us. Grew up in Jacksonville, attended Clay High School, uh, then went to the University of Florida, and now speaking nationally, living on the other side of the country. Yes. But while you were in town, I wanted to visit. I appreciate your time. Yes, thank you so much for having One me. One of the things that we wanted to talk about is just that it can be tough during these holidays and sometimes starting a new year uh, because emotions can just drag us down. I know this is something that you speak about because you've experienced this, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, during the holidays, again, like you said, it can be amazing for some and tough for others. You know, things can be amplified, lack, or we have a lot of comparison. Comparison. It can be stressful for some and really some people can kind of get the blues and get down and that is something that I personally dealt with depression and anxiety and for people out there the thing really to know is that they're not alone that it's not a weird thing that it's not something to be embarrassed or ashamed of it's something that personally I dealt with quite a bit and it was sneaky for me because it wasn't kind of the classic signs that you would think when you you see a commercial or something that talks about depression. For me, I had a life that looked amazing and great on paper and on social media. I was doing all the right things. I had all the right things, the great job, the family, the friends. But the problem was I was unhappy. Yeah. And what had happened is I was chasing happiness outside of myself. And so many of us can get in this pattern of I'll be happy when. I'll be happy when I get the next thing. I'll be happy when I make the right amount of money or find the right partner or get caught in that trap that we think a feeling is going to come with a certain goal rather than really getting clear. And it sounded like Bob Shercliffe did a great yeah, job of this, right. of really living a life clear on how he wanted to feel. It so one of the things that's heartbreaking for so many of us is seeing this happen in so many people who are young, not just 20s, 
teenagers, yeah. college students, uh, high school students, uh, even to the point of taking their own lives. Yeah. Uh, what's your recommendation for moms or dads or for those people who are going through that, uh, those young people who say, I, I just don't feel happy? Absolutely. The first thing is to really reach out and talk to somebody about it, right? So normalizing it is important. So many people struggle with this. So for them to know that they're not alone, I was somebody who dealt with this. And, you know, it's not always the classic signs that we see, again, on the commercial where you don't want to get out of bed or maybe you are having thoughts of taking their own life or maybe it's not quite that severe. But knowing and being able to reach out to somebody, talk to a friend, to a doctor, to a therapist, to a coach, really, once you start to have that awareness around it, you have power to start to change it and do something about it. And I know it can feel very overwhelming when you're in that, but that very first step is to just kind of acknowledge it and then reach out to someone for help yeah. because people are there to want to help. You know, and for parents to not be afraid to talk about it. Because I know it can be scary too, right? To think that you feel helpless, right? How do I help? But really, you know, being able to take that step and take that action and reach out and talk too. So uh, a minute or less, what was it that turned things around for you so you could live a, a healthy, emotional life? Yeah, big thing for me was uh, my son kind of forced me to stop running, and it was belief. I had to get really clear on how did I want to feel in my life because I was living a life out of fear, obligation, or guilt, what I thought I should be doing, what I needed to do, what I was doing for other people. And I stopped believing what was possible for me. And so really for people to remember that whatever they want to do, whatever they can want to create, they can do that, have that, be that. And it's really coming back to the place. We weren't born thinking things weren't possible for us. We learned that somewhere along the way. So really asking ourselves, you know, when did we stop believing it was possible for us? And how can we start to change that? And that first piece, again, is that awareness and that acknowledgement. And then really knowing that whatever it is that they do want to create, they absolutely can. I know it makes a difference to me when I hear encouragement from other people, but that really has to come from inside, doesn't it? It does. You have to be able to believe it. And that doesn't mean that you're just going to one day all of a sudden you will, but there are certain tips and tricks. And the, yeah. the big place is just starting with that awareness of knowing what you want to create or what you want to turn around and change for yourself. Sam Murphy, I appreciate it. We could talk a lot longer, but we wanted to make sure that we got that out there for you. And I want to give you a tool right now. Uh, it is a hard time of year for a lot of folks. So here's the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. It's 1-800-273-8255. You can also text HOME to 741-741. Again, we just wanted to talk about this, bring it up as an issue, and, and I appreciate sharing your story. Great to have a, a person from Jacksonville come back and say, hey, I'm telling everybody around the world about this. Yeah. Thanks for telling us. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks All for right. having me. And uh, we appreciate you being here with us on This Week in Jackson. We air every Sunday morning at this time. Thanks for joining us today. More people in Northeast Florida and South Georgia get their news from News 4 Jacks than anywhere else.